Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Welcome, everybody. We, uh, we felt like that, uh, we always feel like any time that uh, there's some significant news, uh, then we would like to get to you immediately uh, because we know how tough your jobs are and you need answers to questions. And as, as much as we can, we will try to answer questions for you today. And uh, Jeremy, I think we're planning on this being the only uh, time that, that we meet before practice starts. Is that, is that what I've understood from you? So uh, ask your practice questions today. Uh, team is back to 100%, so we're, we're really blessed that they're all healthy and, and doing well. Uh, I do think that uh, Coach Hess and the players have done a remarkable job, uh, and, and Kelsey, um, our, our nutritionist, uh, Luke Ross, our trainer, they've done a tremendous job through all this pandemic in the spring of keeping the guys healthy, getting them in shape, um, even the ones who have had a positive, uh, that they look good right now. And, and I really commend the NCAA for allowing us to watch them work out and, and get to be around them more because with uh, not only their physical health right now, but their mental health, they need to be around coaches and they need to be around us. And, and that's very, very important. And, and we need to be able to see them work out and, and meet with them. And, and then the NCAA for the first time is allowing us to have walkthroughs with them. And, and that helps the teaching process that we would have had in spring practice. It's obviously not full speed and you can't hit, uh, but it's really, really helped. Uh, and it's 20 hours a week, you still get a day off. So it gets the guys in a routine like they're going to have during the season. And then to even go a step further, the NCAA allowed us this morning for the first time uh, for the guys to wear helmets. Um, in, the, in that walkthrough, and I don't know how much you can see of this, probably it doesn't look like much, Jeremy, but, um, and Jeremy, you may can get it, but there's a, a shield in the front, uh, but there's also a shield under underneath down here at the bottom. I'll get Jeremy to hold it up for us. Um, and with this shield, they feel like it gives the, the guys extra protection. Now, some of them that, that wore it this morning uh, in the walkthrough, uh, didn't like it as well because I said, you know, you had trouble breathing. But in practice, we're either going to wear the shield or we're going to wear a mask. And then in the games, they'll, they'll be able to do whatever uh, the, the doctors allow them to do. But, uh, but, but today was the first day. Jeremy, can you hold that up so maybe the guys can see it better? I'm going to take my backdrop off and see if that helps. Okay, and as, uh, as, as Jeremy's getting that ready, we start practice on August 6th, like was planned before. We'll have two days in shorts. The NCAA rules have not changed. We'll have two uh, days in shells, which is shoulder pads and helmets. And, uh, and then we'll have the, the rest of the time in pads. And that will give us uh, uh, the normal start. Uh, here is the, the lower shield here that you go, guys. putting on the helmets now. So you can see the upper shield, a lot of the guys wear anyway. And the lower shield would just replace the mask um, because that, that is uh, protection from them uh, down at the bottom. And a lot of the guys really liked it. Some felt like it, uh, the um, shield fogged up a little bit, but, but kudos to the NCAA for letting us wear it uh, today uh, and up until we start practice because I've told our players Wear it until practice starts at least and try to make it work because people think it's safe. And, and then if you, if you don't like it, we'll go back to the doctors and look at other options, but let's, let's try to make that work. Our school starts on August the 10th. So then we go back to 20 hours a week with, with a day off. So we, we will not have as much time as we normally would in preseason camp. Uh, to, to visit because of school starting earlier for us because it was supposed to start the 18th. But we're, we're also not really sure when our first game will be because Rick Steinbacher is working hard to, to figure out when the plus one is um, because we, we don't have a plus one yet. And, and um, Bubba and Rick are working on trying to schedule. Scheduling's gotten very fluid here the last couple of days just because of decisions made by the ACC, decisions made by the, the uh, SEC, 
and, and some decisions that were already made by the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Uh, so uh, now we've got to figure out who that, that plus one is, and then you have to figure out when do you schedule them. So all, all of that's changing uh, as we speak. So I'm, I'm really not sure uh, who that is, who that will be, what those options are, or when it will be. So we have to have a, a preseason camp with a schedule to play on, on the 12th, uh, maybe the 19th, maybe the 26th. We, we've just got to uh, try to prepare a number of different practice plans un, until we can uh, get ourselves in a position where we know who we're playing. Goals for the fall have not changed. They were the same as the spring. Uh, now you have COVID guidelines and we have our medical guidelines. Uh, so, so we obviously have to go by those guidelines, the, the strict um, interpretation of those guidelines or we can't play. And, and the most important thing for all of us is the safety of our players, our staff, uh, our fans, our, our media, um, everybody involved people that are, are work first responders and, and healthcare people at the stadium. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's something that we're, everybody is looking at from top to bottom to figure out exactly how this thing's going to work. Uh, for us in football, we've got to create more depth. It was one of the disappointing things for us and everybody else that we didn't get to have spring practice uh, because we had a lot of young guys that, that we could have looked at and worked in the spring. And we had 13 early enrollees and some guys that redshirted last year. So we have to make hard decisions with all those guys yeah. in, in fall camp to, uh -huh. to see which will be ready to play and which will not. Our kicking game needs to get better. We mentioned that the other day. So we'll work hard on kicking game uh, starting from the first day. Uh, we want to be better in the red zone, short yardage goal line. We want to be better at two-point plays now that the overtime rule has changed for sure. And, and we always want to be good in one-minute offense because we, we want to be good right before the half and right at the end of the game if we need to drive the length of the field to score. Uh, Tony Grimes signed his scholarship yesterday. He's reclassified, as, as most of you know, from uh, a junior in high school where he finished his, his work and graduated from high school um, earlier in the week. Uh, he will report on Sunday. He'll, he'll get into his dorm on Monday. Um, and, and then he will start doing all of the things you, you have to do to uh, be admitted and going through the process, the, the physical such, um, uh, so we can get him out there and, and ready to go as soon as possible. Uh, the schedule's exciting. Uh, uh, there's a different step in the players, a uh, uh, different pickup in their step after we, we the schedule was released to us. Uh, we got it when you got it. So it was, uh, um, I think we were told it was being sent out at 425 and it was sent out at 430. Uh, so uh, for our coaches, uh, Notre Dame, Florida State, and Syracuse, are the three games that we have not prepared for, that they will start a, a already are in the process of, of getting game plans for those games. Um, and and um, it's an exciting schedule uh, with the addition of these three for sure. And, and our, our guys are, are pumped about it and, and can't wait to get started. Uh, I applaud our board of trustees for what they, they did with social justice the other day, changing the name on, on four of the buildings. Uh, we've had, uh, um, I think, Jeremy, two in-person team meetings now, uh, and, and they've been really good. The first one was kind of awkward because you're spread out all over the place and you've got masks on, and, and, and the second one was more normal, and that's why we want to continue to have them. So uh, this is our new normal, so we've got to learn to how we're eating, how we're practicing, how we're meeting, and... Um, I'm, I'm really proud of Emmanuel Acho, who was a linebacker for us at Texas, and he played three years with the uh, Eagles. And Emmanuel started a show now that's called uh, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. And uh, we've challenged our, our team um, uh, of all colors. Uh, talk to us. Communicate with us. If you don't like something that we're doing, you don't like something in society, you don't like something at the university, tell us. And, and, and we'll listen and we'll talk and we'll learn and, and we can all step up and, and, and do what's right for change. So I feel like we're in a, in a good place uh, right now with our team uh, as far as uh, moving forward with them 
with with all of the things that are happening out there. There's uh, uh, obviously people that that have lost their jobs and are needing well, and and um, unemployment uh, um, may not be as good for them as it was a month ago, and they're they're losing houses and uh, they're losing family members and they're sick. So uh, we're constantly talking to our players about about all those issues nationally and letting them understand as important as football is to us, uh, it's sure not the most important thing in our in our country and in our world right now. Uh, we're just a small part of it trying to, to work out uh, a piece that we really enjoy and, and make sure that we can make football work this fall. Um, any questions, Jeremy, from anybody? Yep, you've got one or two, Coach. So we'll start off with uh, Kiara is first in the queue. Kiara, go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi, Coach. How are you? Great, Kiara. That's good. Um, I want to ask you um, your opinion on whether you see the how you saw the NBA and how they've handled COVID as far as you know, the bubble and, and implementing fans um, via like digital and things like that. Do you see that as a viable option for football? Kira, I, th I think that we're all learning from baseball and men's and women's pro basketball and football will teach us something when the NFL starts coming back and soccer. Um, so the, the bubble theory is obviously working. Uh, that's hard for us. And what we've talked to our team about is uh, that's the only way it looks like it works is, is you've got to be in a bubble even when you're up on campus. We've got 19,000 students coming back here pretty soon. Uh, so the fact that, that we, we can't put them all in a dorm and keep them there and not let them out and uh, we, we can't do what the NBA's done. Uh, but at the same time, there, there's got to be such a level of leadership on your team and discipline on your team um, and trust right now. Uh, we're not practicing uh, with, with our, our strength and conditioning group. Our workouts are meeting tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, some of the guys want to go home. We, we can't keep them from going home. But if they go home, they've got to understand you've got to wear your mask and you've got to go by the guidelines and you've got to wash your hands and keep your social distancing. And uh, so we've told them we, we can make you do that around us. You've got to be disciplined enough and care enough about your teammates and your staff to do it when we're not around. And, and it's never been more important for you to do things right when we're not around. And, and that'll be a big test for our guys this weekend. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, we're on to Ed Harden. Ed, go ahead and unmute yourself and fire away. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ed. Any thought, and I'm sure it's not part of your job, but somebody has to be thinking about how you're gonna physically move a football team to say Miami to play a game, how many airplanes is that going to take? Have you thought that far into it? Ed, what I've thought far enough is to do exactly what you did and ask our bosses, can you tell me how we're going to do this? And 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 good for them. They, they've done amazing things with uh, sanitizing our building, our facilities. They even sanitize the fields. So they're, they're cleaning them every day. Um, and, and I know that we, we've got a lot of bus trips. We take three flights. We go to Boston, we go to Tallahassee, and we go to Miami. Um, so I'm, I'm sure now the airlines have worked really, really hard at being safe. I don't know how many planes that, that means we'll take. I don't know if we have to cut our numbers of players that go or people on the sideline. Uh, so all of those things are, are things that uh, uh, the medical people will be answering um, and, and we'll start asking, asking those questions when we get there. Ed, we're really anxious to get our, the dates of these games because then we'll have to come up with answers more readily, and we, we don't know when we're going to get those dates. So that'll tell us a lot. And, and uh, we, we've talked hard about uh, do we stay in a hotel at, on Friday nights at a home game or do we stay in, in their regular residence? Well, to get their sleep, it's, it's better to go to a hotel. So we're gonna go to a hotel. And now we're looking at who rooms with who for, for safety with the virus. And, and do you room two guys that are normal roommates together because they stay together all the time? Or, or do you move a, a guy who might've had a positive with a guy who might have had a negative because uh, the positive is less likely to infect the negative. Um, so we're, we're looking at things that we never dreamed that we would look at before. We're, 
uh, but we have decided we are going to stay in a hotel because our five away games will be in a hotel. So we've got to get used to it. We've got to have a routine. And uh, how do you meet on a, if it's storming or it's rainy and you don't have enough room in the hotel to social distance, how do you have your meetings before the, the games? Uh, how do you eat your pregame meal if you can't all get in one room because you don't have enough space? Do you have to have two pregame meals and, and change it up? So uh, we're, we're putting uh, more thought in, into stuff like this than you would ever dream that we would do. One of our coaches asked me, when will we stop talking about COVID? And I said, when we get a vaccine. Uh, <laughs> I don't think until then we'll quit talking about it. But it's, it's been a, a vital part of our preparation. And, and those that handle it the best uh, and keep their players the, the safest will be the ones that have a chance to win the most games. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Andrew Jones, you're up. Go ahead and unmute and fire away. Need to mute, Andrew. There we go. There we go. Right. I'm, I'm a technology whiz. <laughs> Coach, I do appreciate you uh, talking with us again. I've got two questions that are unrelated. The first one, we've seen a lot of videos that you guys have been putting out on social media the last week and a half or so. The guys are running and doing all kinds of stuff, and they have masks on. Um, have you? Do you have to scale back? what they could do and the amount of time that they would do it because of the mask? Is it a little bit more, more difficult for them to do what they would do without it? Uh, maybe more time in between drills? And how are you kind of managing and monitoring that? Andrew, it's a, it's a, these are all great questions because it's, it's all new stuff for us. Coach Hess has done an amazing job, he and his staff, and we're trying to have our normal workouts. He, he, thought, he went back and studied the, the lockout at the NFL and talk to a lot of doctors and trainers at, at that point about how the guys without having as many workouts came back and who got hurt and how they got hurt and did we have uh, soft uh, tissue tears and pulls. And, and uh, so he, he's working them uh, at a slower pace to get things back to where they need to be. And he's done an amazing job with it because we're fortunate that, that right now, since we've been back, we haven't had any of those pulls or tears and we had some some last year, uh, but we, we, we've, we've learned um, uh, if you're five yards away from somebody, 15 feet, you can take your mask off as long as no one's near you, uh, but like they have their own uh, water bottle with their name on it, so they come up to their water bottle, they have to have their mask on because the trainer's standing there, uh, they sanitize their hands, they take their bottle, they go five yards away, they pull the mask down, they drink, they pull the mask back up, they go back and put the bottle in. It's, uh, it's an amazing process. And, and, and I stand there with a microphone and say, hey, uh, Eric, you're too close, man. Back away. We have a six-foot pole. And we have trainers and managers walking around saying, here you go, man. This is six feet. Now stay away. Stay away. So uh, what we're trying to do is, is normalize the mask and the social distancing as much as we possibly can before we get started with practice. And that was another great step today that the NCAA let us put helmets on uh, just so they can see if, if they can breathe or are they going to need, uh, will, will they be able to use both shields or do they take the bottom shield off? And if they do, will they need a mask in practice? Uh, so we're, we're just going trial and error. And we're constantly talk to them, talking to them about hydration because they've got to be hydrated with, with all this. And, and more than ever before, and, and taking care of their bodies over the weekend. And uh, because we're just at, at such a different time, uh, it's going to take a, a different attitude and, and take a different discipline uh, than, than we've had before. Uh, uh, internal leadership has never been more important on a sports team than it is right now. Totally unrelated uh, other question. A lot of you guys have received a lot of uh, preseason accolades and honors and, and acknowledgement. Recently, I've seen Marcus McKeithen and Jordan Tucker's name come up. How have they looked in the last couple of weeks when you've had a chance to, to watch them? What are your expectations for them, and where do you guys have them right now? Yeah, the, the offensive line looks really, really good. We're in shorts, and um, a friend of mine, Mr. Joe Jamel, an old lawyer, said uh, you can't learn to swim without water, and you can't learn to play football without pads. So uh, we'll, we'll see when we get in pads. But all five of the – uh, offensive linemen with the blue unit look really, really good. They're in great shape. They're confident. 
Um, I do think staff continuity is really helping us. Only John Lilly is new on offense. Only Javon DeWitt is new on defense. And Javon had two years with, uh, with Jay Bateman at, at Army. Uh, so they're on the same page. Uh, but those guys really look good. They're in good shape. They, they've taken care of their bodies. Uh, it makes me feel good about our discipline that while they were away from us, they didn't come back really out of shape and, and, and sloppy. And they look good. Uh, so, uh, again, I give a lot of credit to uh, our strength and conditioning, our nutrition staff, and our medical staff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. Coach, I think that was the first football question you've answered in like a month. Yeah, I, may, I think maybe six months. <laughs> Brian Tease, you're up. Go ahead and unmute and go ahead. Hey, uh, two questions, neither about football, sorry. Okay. Um, First one is, uh, Mac, do you know if the testing procedures are going to change for the players once the students at UNC come back and players are ostensibly, you know, might be in classrooms with other students? Uh, Brian, I, I don't know all the medical stuff. I know that our tests have been taking longer to get back our results than we need and that our, our doctors and trainers are working really, really hard to get faster turnaround. So mm -hmm. I, I do know that. Uh, I also think I didn't get to read all eight pages carefully of the ACC uh, medical protocol, uh, but I, I, it seems like uh, from what I, I found out, and Jeremy could uh, check this to make sure I'm right, is if you've had a positive, you will not be tested again for 90 days. Uh, if you've had negative tests, then you'll be tested each week before the game, and then we need to get a very quick turnaround because if they test a player on Wednesday and, and we do not get the results back till Friday, we could very well have a player on Friday morning that tested positive and could not play in the game or, or maybe 10, uh, maybe five. And, and it changes uh, who you practice that week and how you did it. So I do think Brian, that uh, testing is going to be very important for those who have not tested positive at this point uh, during the season. Um, and then the second question is, Given what we're seeing with the MLB and how, you know, entire teams like the Marlins are, are being taken out and they haven't really done any bubble type situation like the NBA, WNBA, um, WSL. Uh, given just like given where the country and specifically North Carolina is, do you think, you know, is this a smart idea to, to be coming back to football and, and having students on campus and, you know, not perfectly controlled environment? Yeah, Brian, I, I know I'm not near smart enough to answer all those questions. Uh, what I, I do know is that uh, I like the fact that we've had our guys for a month, um, a little more than a month now, most of them, and they've been living in the same uh, situation uh, most of that month. So they know who they live with. They, they, they have protocol down. Um, all of our guys in the dorm have their own room to live in. Um, so uh, I do know what we can do as coaches, as a staff, and as players is go by the guidelines. And, and we can wear a mask like we're supposed to. And, and we can wash our hands and, and we can social distance. And, and so we're going to do everything we've been told to do. And um, from our standpoint, what I have told Bubba Cunningham and our doctors the entire time, I want to play, our coaches want to play, our players all want to play. We have asked our players, our coaches, and our staff every time we've talked to them, if anybody is uncomfortable with this, don't go home. Keep your scholarship. Keep your salary. We'll see you when this stuff's over. And, and we have no problems with that. And it's not a macho thing. Uh, tell me, tell your coach, have your parents call us. Uh, so we want to make sure that no one is uncomfortable. In fact, we've got some of our staff members, not our coaches, but some of our staff members, that can work remotely have not been back to work yet. They, they work from home. They have not been in the building. And, and we discussed that again today. Uh, but uh, if at any point the doctors say it is not safe to play, we won't play. But I think everybody is trying to see what is safe to play and, and making sure that this, this will work. And I'm very, very encouraged that I think it can work. Um, we, our, our work, uh, that the NCAA has allowed us to do for the last two weeks uh, has been really good and really safe. And, and 
we'll all start working um, uh, at a faster pace when we get our pads on and when we get in and, and we'll see how that works. When the students come back, it's gonna be different for the students. It's gonna be different for us. Um, but but I, I think, uh, again, I'm, I'm glad I'm not making decisions on, um, I, I've got grandchildren. Uh, my children are asking me, should my kids go back to school? I can't answer those questions. I think everybody's got to answer them for themselves. And thank goodness that, that we've got brilliant people in the, the medical profession that are working hard to get a vaccine and that are, are telling us every day what to do. And uh, I just wish we all would do what we're told to do. If we all did exactly what we're told to do, it sounds like we would be in a better place for everybody in America and everybody would be safer. So hopefully we'll start listening and, and wearing our mask and social distancing. And I, I told the players the other day, do I like wearing a mask? I hate it. I don't like it at all. And I'm wearing it most of my day. It doesn't matter. They're, they're not asking us to wear it. Really, they're telling us, if you want to be safe, wear it. And I want to be safe. And, and they're saying, if you want to play football, do these things. I want to play football. So I think that's the decision for our players and our coaches, Brian, is how badly do they want to go by the guidelines and the rules to play? And are they disciplined enough that they can do it? And then if it's not safe, and I mean not safe for fans or media or, or the band or uh, the people with the concessions or, or the people for security or safety, uh, if it's not safe for anybody, we won't play. And I think that's, that's the big question moving forward. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Greg Barnes, you're up. Go ahead. Hey, Mac. Um, hey, Greg. I wanted to see, we're a week out from the start of training camp. How do you see the, the strengths of this team and what are maybe some positions that you have some concern with? Okay, I, I've, I've watched them now for two weeks, so I, I can kind of just go through it. I, I do this every day, but – I think we can be really good at wide receiver. And I won't use the word great because that, that's to be determined, but we're, we're really good. We're really good at quarterback. We, we've got a, uh, we don't have a lot of experience because of Jason and, and Jacoby at backup quarterback. So we need experience there. Uh, so we're, we're really talking about depth at every position. I think we'll have depth at, at wide receiver. And we've got the older guys, excuse me, Greg, we got to figure out who the younger guys behind them are. Running back, we're, we're really good. We got to find a third one. But we got two really good running backs. Uh, offensive line, we we're talking about today. I think all five of them, uh, they, they've been with Stacy a year. They, uh, they've been with Phil in this offense. They're really good. Um, so we think they can get better, but we got to find five more. And, and that's really, really important as we're going forward. Tight end, Garrett Walston's the only one that's really played. So, Kamari Morales is, is young. Then you got the two freshmen that just got here and don't have any experience. So that's a, a question mark for us. Garrett's got to carry that load, and Kamari's got to come on until the young ones can, can come. Uh, defensively, uh, I really like what I see in the secondary. Boy, from last year where we had injuries and no depth and really struggled, and it, it, it kept Coach Bateman from calling a lot of the defenses we wanted to, uh, we're, we look really good in the secondary. And then you add Tony Grimes to that. I'm sitting there looking at the other day, and I thought, oh, and we got Tony. I forgot about Tony because he wasn't supposed to be here till January. So I think the secondary can be really special. And then how many do you play? And do some become nickels and, and you play one less linebacker? Um, the, the linebackers, you, you've got the two that played all the time back, and, and they're really good. Uh, what you've got to do is make sure that uh, uh, Kadri Jackson and um, – uh, Asante, uh, those guys, uh, Eugene Asante, get ready to go. They need to play more because I'd love to play too deep across the board. And then up front where you, you lose a guy like Strobridge, you've still got Fox. Hopper looks really good if we can keep him healthy. Chris Collins red-shirted. And he's looking good. Uh, you've got all the young ones that can mix in there and see how they do. Uh, we won't know about them till we really get in pads. They can run. They look pretty. Uh, and then inside, you've got a lot of different combinations. Tamari Fox played well. Uh, Ray Vahasik played really, really well at the end of the year. Jaleel Taylor did some outstanding things. Uh, we like Kristen Varner. You've got Zach Gill. Uh, so you, you've got enough guys in there that, that we think that uh, uh, we think we have a chance to be good. We, we just have to, to live up to it. Then you've got uh, 
Uh, you've got uh, Noah Ruggles from last year as your kicker, but you've also got Grayson Atkins coming in. It's an All-American from Furman. Uh, ben Curran uh, should be much better as a punter because he showed signs of brilliance at times last year. And you've got both your snappers back. So, And, and I, I, we've got to do a better job in punt, block, and return. We did okay in punt, but we didn't get anything out of our punt, block, and return team. Kickoff return was good. Kickoff coverage was fine. Uh, but we, the, that punt return team, punt block team, has, has got to be big for us, and it wasn't last year. And when you've got a returner like uh, Daz Newsom, you, you need to, to be able to give him a chance. You mentioned the, the versatility in the, in the secondary. When you got guys like uh, Trey Morrison and Connor McMichael and I guess Grimes now too that he's there, do you have any idea about who you'd prefer to be at that nickel spot? No, it's going to be fun. It's it's uh, there's so much depth there right now. We're we're just walking around like kids in a candy shop. It's uh, uh, we're just watching. And we've told them, you know, the the bench is your 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 friend uh, if you're a coach right now because they all want to play, so they've got to compete. And and when you get outstanding defensive backs that can be one on one with your receivers, uh, it forces everybody to get better. We're going to be playing against guys in practice that will be as good or better than the guys we'll play in the game. And that just makes you get better and better and better. It happened the, the last time we were here. It happened at Texas. When your best can play against your best, it forces them all to get better. Uh, but, but that's what, uh, number one, you, you don't have field and boundary corners anymore, really, because with uh, tempo, everybody's got to play right and left corner. A lot of people have to play right and left safety. Uh, and then you go to nickel and, and you start looking at who those guys are. Uh, so we've got to find the two best cover corners. Uh, first, we've got to find the best six defensive backs and try to get them on the field. And then you, you separate them with you put your hitters inside, put your cover guys outside, and just kind of figure out who it is. But you've, you've got Don Chapman back. You, you've got Cam Kelly back, all those young ones, plus uh, the Miles Wolfucks and, and the DJ Fords and the older guys. And then you add uh, – um, the, the, the transfer corners um, that Bryce Watson and uh, Kyler McMichael. Uh, then you stick in a, a, a late addition with Tony Grimes along with everything you had. Storm Duck played so well at the end of the year. Trey Morrison's really good. It's, it's, it's fun. So I, I can't wait to watch those guys. And, and our challenge is for those younger linebackers uh, to step up and play. We, we need to be able to if, if uh, Chaz Surratt gets tired, because with COVID, you don't know who's going to be there. You don't know who's going to be out this week. And, and, and also, you're, you're not sure with these masks and shields. And um, if they get really hot, well, they have to come out more. We have to substitute more. So uh, in practice, we're just going to put the, the white linebackers in with the blue team and, and act like it's normal, because we've told them this is the way it may be. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Greg. Mike Barber, we're on to you. Go ahead. Morning, Coach. Thanks for doing this. I just wanted to ask an off-the-field question, but you mentioned some of the um, conversations you've had with your team, team meetings, things like that. I'm curious with the, the movements going on, how have you seen a change in, in athlete empowerment, in the, the power structure really between coaches and players and, and how players feel free to express themselves? Mike, I think that what I've seen is that the, the athletes feel like that uh, they should express themselves. And they're, they're speaking for themselves, but they're also speaking for others that don't have the same platform. And, and I think that's okay. I've told our guys, uh, be a great team member. And when it's time to do a team something, be into that. If you've got opinions and, and um, they're, they're done properly and professionally, go for it. And, and I have opinions and I have a platform. So uh, I feel like I, I can use those and, and I understand my job. I understand the parameters of my job and I don't want to get outside of those parameters. But at the same time, if I have an opinion or if I feel like I should share an opinion that our team feels really strongly about, I, I feel like that's my job to step up and do that. And, and I think our players appreciate that. When you consider that and the likelihood of the one-time transfer rule coming in, um, does it change the way you, you coach kids and, and does it change the, the power dynamic of, of kind of who's the boss, I guess? Mike, it doesn't for us. Uh, our coaches have asked that question. How do we coach when it's going to be one-time transfer? 
Uh, and I said, number one, you recruit the kids that want to be here. You recruit the kids that love this place. You recruit the kids that, that fit who we are as coaches. And then they won't want to transfer. And, and that's, that's the key. If somebody wants to transfer, I don't want them to stay. I, I like to sit down and tell them, here are the, the possible consequences of you transferring. You may not get to go somewhere else. It may be a lesser place. So be smart before you do this. But if you want to go, I'll never talk a guy into staying because I want guys that want to be here. And, and I want guys that are totally committed to, to me and to this place and to our staff. And, and in the fourth quarter, those are the guys that win. Uh, but I'm not worried about the one-time transfer rule because um, I, I don't think it'll ever affect us because we're fair with our kids. We're honest with our kids. If it does affect somebody, it would be that they're not getting to play. And, and this is a tough sport for morale because you've got 11 that play at a time and you've got 120 on a team. So the large majority of guys are sitting on the bench. They don't get to play. So they're griping. Their parents are griping. Their high school coach is griping. Everybody's griping. And in truth, you can only play 11. So you can't play more than that. So you'll always have some disgruntled players on a football team. But I want to make it so good here with everything that we're doing for their experience and trying to help them when they get out that they want to stay. Because I've told them all, you may not play here. You may not play in the NFL, so you've got to work at where uh, if your dream of playing is taken away because you got hurt, you got sick, you quit, you're not good enough, that doesn't ruin your, your life and, and, and your future and your career. So let's work on your life after football, and then football will take care of itself because we told them we love you all. We can't play you if you're not good enough or if you don't practice good enough or if you don't act right. We, we can't do that. Our job is to win. We want you to graduate and we want you to win. Now in that process, we want you to have fun and we want you to prepare yourself for, for this tough life out there after football and with, with COVID right now, it's harder to get jobs for young people than ever. We have a responsibility to prepare our guys for jobs that they can get and start looking for them and helping them as soon as they get out of here. And I think that's why we haven't seen a lot of transfers. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mike. So, computer died, so I quickly became our director of on-campus recruiting, Kyra Kendrick, which is fun. Um, I can still see a list. Gregory, you're at the top. Did you have a question? I'm at the top because I was made the host, so I have, all the, I have all the power now. So that's big time. <laughs> I think. Well, if you want to make me the host, we can get back to normal. Do I? Does anybody know how I do that? Yeah, go, click on my uh, top right of my screen, the drop down there, and you can make me the host. Fun times with electronics. Yeah, Jeremy hadn't had a good day. In fact, to be very honest with all of you, he couldn't get me on. And he walked over all frustrated to tell you all I was going to be late and I got on myself. So I, I just want you to know that for future reference with Jeremy with his technical background. See, hey, that's why I, that's, I let him handle his business and I try to stay out of it. Okay, I think I fixed it. Yep, you thank did. you, Gregory. Thank you, Greg. So we're on to Jonah. Jonah, go ahead. How you doing, Coach? Good, Jonah. I got a couple questions. First off, um, you kind of touched on it before with everything going kind of up in the air in terms of scheduling. You don't even know dates yet. How does that specifically affect game planning, especially considering your first two games are now might are probably out of the door? Yeah. Uh, John, it's another great question. What we've done is, is we've taken a practice schedule for September 12th, September 19th, and September 26th. And, and we've got every practice worked out because if you, if, if you have three extra weeks to practice, I mean, you could wear your team out. So um, normally you have 25 practices available before your first game. The NCAA is still giving you that. So if it's moved back, then, then uh, they're going to give us those 25 practice opportunities in those first four weeks. But then we've got to figure out how do we do game week if we play the 12th instead of the – we were supposed to play the 4th. Um, so that's what we're all working on right now is, is how do you keep your team healthy? How do you get them in great shape without wearing them out? And, and we're all looking at all those scenarios. And, and – 
we'll be so much happier when we get times. The players are needing them, the, the parents, the fans that, that want to try to go to the away games if they can get tickets. We don't know how many fans will be in the stands. Uh, we don't know where the games are. We don't know when they are. Uh, so, so right now, uh, everyone is excited about the schedule and very anxious to get those questions answered that you just asked. What we've done for the players is we've shown them all three of those schedules to ease their mind and make sure they understand that we're prepared. If they tell us we're, we're playing the 26th of September, don't worry about it. We've got it. And you're not going to practice for eight weeks in a row without a break. So, so just take a deep breath. We're okay. Absolutely. And um, the second question uh, involves recruiting. Just how much recruiting is left in the 2021 cycle with uh, a lot of the players off the board now? And when do you shift your focus to 2022? I, I think most of our 2021s are done. We've got a couple other guys that we're talking to, two or three. Uh, but but um, our, our class will not stay ranked as high probably as it was going to be because you take Tony Grimes and, and he reclassifies. That takes him out of that class. And then we, we probably won't sign but maybe 20 guys. So uh, the class won't be big, and usually those aren't rated as high. But per player, it's really a good class. Uh, and we're already working on the 22s. The 22s are unique uh, if their state doesn't play high school football this fall. Uh, most of our evaluation will be done in the spring. If they play in the spring or in, in different camps that they go to or talking to people or, or trying to get them here at our camp so we get to know them, uh, so all of that's really uncertain moving forward. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Jonah. All right, we got Aaron Beard next. Aaron, go ahead. Hey, Matt, can you hear me? Yes, Aaron. There we go. I was having mute problems. Um, it's good to actually be able to talk somewhat about football for once. Um, I was wondering, though, in a normal year, you're probably starting this time saying, okay, your goals are to win the Coastal and, and those types of things. Are you able to even talk about the big picture with these guys about the opportunity that's ahead of them on the field, considering you guys have just got to get through each week with the safety protocols and everything else? Yes, Aaron, and we, we've tried to, to talk to them about football constantly to, to keep it on their mind so they, they just don't see TV and hear all the – tough things that are going on out there. And we talked to them about those tough things, but we also talked to them about football. So our, our goals now would be changed to win the opener, win all the in-state games, and uh, get to the conference championship game and win the ACC. And, and then wherever that takes you, hopefully that would take you to the playoff and win a national championship. So uh, other than the coastal to get to the, the conference championship game, uh, I'm not sure that it's been decided yet how you get there. Uh, one person told me that it was the two highest rated teams and somebody else told me it was the uh, most wins, uh, percentage wins over your ACC games. I don't know that they've talked about tiebreakers and all that. So I can't get into to definite detail with the players. Uh, but I've told them that, that we need to win all of our games. And if we do, that puts us in the conference championship game and gives you a chance to go to the playoffs and win the national championship. And, and, and beyond that, uh, that's where we are. And just to follow up on that, the comp, you, we talked a lot about confidence last year with that group that you had inherited, that you had to get them to play with some confidence. I guess that's probably a positive at this point that, you know, you have experience back in a lot of key areas and they have confidence to kind of handle this situation that maybe puts them in a better position when you actually do start playing games. Absolutely, Aaron. I think it's the biggest difference in their workouts now. There's leadership. They talk. They laugh. Last year, we, we had five guys that didn't even go through spring practice on defense. We had never seen run till, till we started practice. So uh, now we're talking about how deep our secondary is. Uh, so uh, the kids are having fun. They, 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 they're communicating with us really well. Uh, they trust us. We trust them. Um, and, and we know that we have a chance to be really good. So the confidence is high. Um, and and uh, that, that's what makes it so much fun right now. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Aaron.
And Aaron, if I don't have a, a chance to get on a couple of these Zooms with the media, could you take it over for me since you do me better than me? That's what I've been told anyway. We, but at some point, you've got to do me for us. I think Aaron left the call, Coach. I don't I know what happened. He, he ran. His boys threw him under the – his guys threw no, him No, I'm here. No, I'm here. I'll, do, I'll save it for a press conference when we can actually be together one day. How All about right. that? We'll do that. Let's hope <laughs> that's soon. <sighs> Chapel, you're up. Hey, Coach. Um, I'm doing a story on one of your old linebackers from the 70s. 90s, sorry, Eddie Mason. Um, he meant, talked a lot about you. Can you kind of take me through y'all's relationship from high school to UNC to? Yes, uh, Eddie is uh, kind of like an extended family for us. He's uh, like an adopted son. He's uh, a minister that works out a lot of the, the different guys up in the D.C. area. I text with him and talk to him all the time. Um, I, I look at how I would evaluate someone's character if I would let them keep my kids or my grandkids. And I would absolutely uh, turn my kids over to Eddie Mason. He's, he's smart, he's tough, but he's got a great heart. And uh, he, he is a giver, not a taker for sure. I'm so proud of it. Thanks. Thank you. Andrea Adelson, you're up. Hi, thanks for doing this. Um, I just uh, wanted to ask an, another scheduling question. Um, what was your initial reaction when the discussion started about uh, Notre Dame playing a, as an ACC team for this year only, and how does that change the dynamic in the league? Uh, Andrea, number one, I have no input. Nobody called me to ask me. <laughs> you're, you're the first one to ask my opinion. So uh, obviously nobody cared what I thought. Um, um, I think it's great because it's a tremendous program. Uh, they do it right. Uh, they do it with class. Uh, they go by the rules. Uh, Brian Kelly is a, a very good friend of mine. Um, and any time you can take a brand like Notre Dame and tie it to your league, it helps. And people can say anything they want. Any league in America would jump on Notre Dame right now if they wanted to join. So the fact that we've got them for a year, good for us. Good for John Swafford, good for Notre Dame. It's a very unique situation. Uh, whether it's the future or not, who knows? Not my, not my wheelhouse, not my lane to get in. Uh, but but I, I'm sure that the ACC would love to have them come in if they ever decided they wanted to. As a follow-up to that related to the schedule, obviously it's 10 games and it's just for this one year only, but would you be in favor of – maybe moving toward a, a nine game conference schedule in the future. I don't know how you feel about divisions, but um, as we saw last year, playing Wake Forest as a non-conference games, it doesn't compute sometimes. So now that you're having this opportunity to play more league games, do you think that might change opinions about maybe we should play more league games in the future? Yeah, Andrea, we went through this in the big 12. When, when, um, when you had 12 teams and then got down to 10, there was a big discussion. Do you add two more? Or do you just play nine conference games? And we went to the nine conference games, and there were no divisions. The negative with that is that you uh, often might have the same teams play twice for the conference championship that had already played. Well, you'd have to uh, because you're, you're doing that. Uh, but I like the way our league is. I like the way it's divided. I like the fact we've got two divisions. I like the crossovers. Um, the, the fact that, that Boston College was our crossover game this year, and that's why I think they kept us with Boston College, is good. Most of our guys have, have not been to Boston. Um, we don't get to play Florida State very often, so that's fun. It's exciting that our guys will get to go to Tallahassee, and especially for, for our Florida guys. Uh, so I just think that uh, uh, I, I like the way we're doing it. And, and this year will be unique that we get to play more on the other side but we've still got our natural rivals with NC State and with Duke. Uh, I like the fact that we played Wake Forest last year because all of the in-state teams that we can play, it, it helps financially for our state. Um, and, and a lot of the kids on all of these teams have been recruited from this state, so they love playing against each other. And the fans love to talk to their rivals. So uh, I, I think all that's fun, but I, I like who we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. On to Ross Martin. Ross, go ahead. 
Hey, Mac, uh, I was wondering if you could give kind of your first impressions that you have on the freshmen, what you've seen maybe from January and February to the last month or so, anything from strength conditioning to actual football stuff uh, with, the, with the incoming freshmen. Ross, we've talked about that, and, and we really haven't seen them enough. You know, the, the ones in January, we didn't get to watch them work out because we were out recruiting and then we go to spring break and we're getting ready to go to spring practice and, and we're out of here. And, and then we didn't get to see them in person until a couple of weeks ago. And, and then this summer, um, we, we shut it down for a week and, and, and then we couldn't watch them because the NCAA wouldn't allow us to. So we've only gotten to watch them here probably a week, 10 days. Um, and, and they're, they're good, they're, they're, they look good in shorts, but I'd really rather not comment on them till we see them in pads. And I can talk to you more about them uh, after that first week of practice uh, when we get to see them really hit somebody. Uh, I, I really believe Mr. Jamel's right. You, you can't learn to swim without water. You, you can't learn to play football without pads. So if I, if I said all the glowing things that I would recruit them all again, they can all run, they look good, uh, but I, I wanna see them when, when somebody gets across from them with pads on. Okay, and then a different question here then. Uh, is every, are there, people who had injuries 2019, is everybody healthy or is there anybody still being held out or any injury details you can give us on certain players? I know, you know, Renee had the injury. Uh, Jaleel Taylor had something as well. Anything on that? Yeah, J Jeremy, can you step in? You're supposed to be the, the injury person. Yep, everybody that you would think of that had an injury is available. Um, I'll discuss that more with you you guys when we flip the roster early next week. I'll give you some information. So just sit tight on that. But for the most part, Ross, um, those that were expected to miss spring are, are in workouts and ready to go. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. We've got Matt Marshall. Matt, go ahead. Hey, Mac. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Hey, Matt. Um, I want to ask, I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but what, what kind of your discussions been with, with Bubba when it comes to those, that plus one game? Have, have you had much, any input on it? And, and can you kind of provide maybe uh, what your thoughts on it? And do you have any preference, actually, to who maybe you might want to see in that plus one spot? Matt, I really don't know as, as much about it because, it, you know, they talked about playing the regular season. Then there was discussion about no out-of-conference games. Then there was plus, discussion about an eight plus one. And, and then a 10 plus one. So Rick Steinbacher, who played for us, and I really trust him with my life, he and Bubba are totally in charge of that. Um, I, I think from what was said, the ACC would rather it be a home game. So our two home games would be Connecticut or James Madison. Um, so I'm sure they're in conversations with those people now, but I've been so overloaded. Uh, I've told them to do whatever's best. And, and I've said, I've said from the beginning, I want us to make sure we're all safe. That, that every, if, don't call me about any decision because I'm gonna tell you, if, it, if we're all safe, let's do it. And they're gonna do that anyway. And then I said, then the other part of it, we gotta make some money at some point. So whatever you all need to do after safety is concerned to, uh, to get the right people to play, to, to make some money, do it. And, and I'm all in. So. Those are the only two things I've, I've said at all. So I'm, I'm staying out of it. Rick will call me and say, we're looking at this. What do you think? Uh, at this point, it's, it's so fluid that he hasn't even been able to, because it just happened what, yesterday or the Wednesday. Um, it's been so fluid that, that he hasn't even been able to talk to everybody. So I think they're in the process right now of, of talking to everybody and, 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 even the ones that you're not going to play now, there has to be discussions. Are you going to reschedule the game later? Or so that's a that's probably as as uh, hard a situation right now to work through as any. So thank goodness Bubba and Rick are doing that instead of me. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Gregory Hall. You're up. We got two more. Hey, Mac, what are some of the challenges for you and your coaching staff with such a drastic last-second schedule change that the ACC uh, came out with a couple of days ago? Uh, the biggest thing that, that – uh, the first thing, Greg, would for me would be to keep the players and the parents uh, up to date and aware of what's going on. When something comes out that quickly, 
then parents say, do we get tickets to the games? Where are the games? When are the games? Can I get a hotel room? Uh, will we get tickets on the road? And, and I've never been told in my life so many times, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, so uh, for all of us who have structured lives and have schedules and, and, and want to know what's going to happen, I, I have our staff scheduled a year in advance. And I'm not really sure what's going to happen Monday. So that's been the, the toughest thing is that uh, people have not been allowed to do things that they, they grew up doing that were fun. So we, we're having to tell our players, that, do we like it? No. Is it different? Yes. Is it not as much fun as if you uh, ran up and hugged everybody and could go out and eat dinner? And uh, yeah, it's all different. And it'll be different when the students come back. You're not going to be able to go to parties and you're not going to be able to be in big groups. And it's just, it's just not going to happen. So, uh, and we've got that till, till this thing goes away. So I think that's been the, the biggest thing about scheduling and everything. Secondly, it's uh, um, coaches again, are, they're creatures of routine and we don't know when we're gonna play. So it drives you nuts that you don't know when your opener is and, and you don't know who you're playing. So all we can do is, is live in the moment, do what we know we can do. And right now that means get a scouting report for Syracuse and for Florida State and for Notre Dame. That's all we can do. And then in today's staff meeting, the staff said, who, who just, just like you all, and, and who, who's our plus one? <laughs> I don't know. When are we going to know? I don't know. Well, well when are we going to play them? I said, I don't know who it is, and I don't know when we're going to play them. And then I thought they'd say, what time is it that you don't know? And I said, I don't know what time it is on the day that I don't know we're going to play them since I don't know who it is. So I think that's the most frustrating thing is that, um, and, and I understand for the schedule makers, it's a nightmare. They got to figure all this out. And, and then we all, all the football ops people have to get a plane or a bus. They, they have to get a hotel if it's on the road. Um, uh, and, and again, athletics directors and, and chancellors and presidents are trying to decide how many people get to come to the games. And then how is that allotment of tickets going to be separated? And then the players asked the other night, uh, do our parents get tickets? Do, do we get our normal four tickets for, for our guests? And, and I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, I think, Greg, that's been the most frustrating thing is that the, the, the more answers we get, the better everybody will feel moving forward. And does it affect at all what you do in practice starting with your first day next Thursday? No, we, we have actually gone back and, and, and I'm so proud of the coaches. We have scheduled. So if we play any of those times, we will be fresh and ready to play. So like if we play the 26th of September, we may be taking two days off a week in, in that plan. So we have a plan for each of the starting dates. Um, and we had one for the fourth. Uh, but we have a plan now for each of the starting dates. And, and what we'll do as soon as we see when it is and what it is, we'll share that with our team. But they know that, that we're organized and, and ready. We are ready for whatever's thrown at us. And, and I told the players, the only way I think we wouldn't play is if it's not safe. And if it's not safe, we don't want to play. I mean, I don't want you all out there if it's not safe. So understand, we're going to play unless the doctors decide, the medical experts decide it's not safe. And then if they do, then we shouldn't play. That, that's uh, kind of what Brian was talking about earlier. It's just uh, those are facts. And I'm going to sit and do what I'm told. Awesome. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Greg. All right, Coach, we got our last one from Alyssa Ray here. Hey, Coach, with Clemson being so dominant in the Atlantic Division lately, now with this new format, divisions are out the window, how does that change the landscape of this conference, considering everyone's kind of on the same playing field and have the same opportunity to get to the ACC title game? Well, uh, Alyssa, I think it's, it's fun and unique and new, and at a time where there's so many tough things out there for all of us, it's kind of a new buzz. It's, uh, th this is fun, and this is unique, and I think we're all trying to figure it out. I, I was 
I walked into the staff room the other day and our coaches were looking at everybody's schedule to see who, in their minds, who had the best schedule and who had the toughest schedule and who had the best chance to win with their schedule they had. And I said, you all know that doesn't matter. Nobody asks you. Nobody cares. You better be worried about our schedule, not anybody else's. Uh, but but it's, uh, it's fun and unique that, that now all of a sudden uh, the, the challenge of Syracuse, Notre Dame, Florida State for us just thrown right on us. And you should have seen Michael Carter's face, who's from uh, uh, West Florida. He, he, Coach, are we really playing Florida State at Florida State? And I said, yes, we are, bud. And I've never seen a happier young guy. So that, that, that's fun and unique. The, the kids have worked so hard without any answers. And, and then at one point, I thought we probably weren't going to have a schedule till next Tuesday. And, and then all of a sudden, the schedule popped out. So we called a team meeting Wednesday night just to have this discussion with them, to tell them everything we know about uh, what the schedule and, and what we don't know about it. And, and uh, understanding we'll get these answers, but when your parents are asking, tell them we don't know. We, we'll, we'll let them know as soon as we know. But, but I think the, the, the biggest thing, Alyssa, is that it's new, it's unique, and it's kind of fun and, and, and challenging right now in a time where we've had so many things taken away from us. And we've said so many hurtful things happen to friends and family and, and, and just, just looking at things across the country. It's, it's been such a downer. This is fun and this is unique and it, it's, uh, it's challenging. So people have asked me, well, you, you're, you're going to Florida State and you're playing Notre Dame. That's much tougher. I don't care. I, I'm excited. I'm excited about the, the games. I'm excited for the kids. Uh, the coaches were excited to have a schedule. The fans are excited. So I, I just think that this is, this is really cool that, that there, there's hope, there's a chance. It's new, it's unique, and, and we'll all learn from all of this stuff and, and come out stronger on the other side. Thank you. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate the time. Appreciate you, Coach, giving us the time to do all that. And we uh, 